I keep seeing videos like this or that claiming that LLMs are bad and that in quote senior engineers do not use them and would be faster without them. I want to offer the other perspective. From a senior engineer who actually ships software, worked with a lot of other programmers and saw a ton of code bases. Part of the backslash is about identity and status. Many of us take pride in our craft and it is uncomfortable when a new tool appears to touch skills that we value. So that discomfort can turn into performative dismissal. But if we are honest, these models are already quite capable. I've written and reviewed code for a decade now and most production code I've seen is far from perfect. Software engineering is a wide participation discipline, not an elite sport reserved for a few prodigies. In my opinion, that is some kind of gatekeeping that does not make our field better. It only narrows who feels welcome to contribute. For newbies, it might seem impressive when you see people writing Tetris in five minutes, but let's be honest, that has nothing to do with real software engineering. That is just memorized code that they just write down. Very simple example, you see a for loop. As engineer, you know when to use the structure. It is not a skill to memorize it in 10 different programming languages. That is what LLMs are good for. There is also a myth about a golden past. Even before large language models, none of us sat down and typed flawless solutions in a single pass. Languages and ecosystems are just too large for that. Real life looked like this. We searched for error messages, checked syntax, read documentation, tried small experiments and copied snippets from past projects or from the internet. LLMs do not change that fundamentals, they only shorten the loop. There is also a misconception about what a senior programmer does. The more senior you become, the less your value is measured in lines of code and the more it depends on framing solutions, managing risks and making trade-offs with stakeholders. We are solving business problems under constraints. Goals, costs, risks, maintainability and data governance. Code is just the implementation of a decision, not the decision itself. So the real leverage comes from asking the right questions, reducing uncertainty and protecting invariance. Here is a real use case from my work. A stakeholder wanted to add a thumb up and thumb down feature of our chatbot. It sounds like a few lines of code, but in reality the work starts before any code is written. So we had to decide what to store, only the thumb, but also free text. How do we want to persist the answers? In an in-memory store that is fine for a demo or a durable solution that supports analysis over time? We also have to define what happens when a user deletes his account. Do we remove the ratings or just anonymize them? So whether there is an administrative view, which teams can see individual records and which teams only see the aggregates. We also have to make ratings meaningful over time by versioning the model response that was rated so that a score still refers to the exact content that is evaluated. From there we start with an in-memory prototype that stores ratings only in memory. We define a clear interface, for example, a feedback repository with methods like save, find by message and aggregate by period so that the rest of the code does not care about the storage details. We hide the details of the implementation behind the factory so that today's in-memory store can become tomorrow's Postgres store without changing the complete code base. We keep the data model stable and plan a migration script as well as an anonymization path. We also provide a minimal administrative view with a date range and an export. We define a roles and permissions model where, for instance, the support team can read individual ratings while the product team only sees aggregated data. Then we ship the smallest useful slice, gather feedback and iterate. That's what agile software development is about. So where do LLMs help and where should they stay out? They accelerate in research, boilerplate and comparison work. I ask an LLM for authorization models with clear trade-offs. I let them draft a first repository implementation and generate test skeletons. I use them for a first pass at a migration script. The key is the scope. I apply them to a small bounded task and keep a human, so me, in the loop. I do not set an autonomous agent loose on the entire code base and expect magic because this is how you get strange changes and fragile systems. I also do not outsource decisions about privacy posture, deletion policies, access controls or model costs. Those require understanding, accountability and context. These models are very powerful tools, but they are not my judgment. I also do not claim that they are perfect, they hallucinate, they can suggest insecure patterns. They can introduce a lot of risks if they are used carelessly. So tests, review and ownership remains non-negotiable. 
you own your code base and you own what you merge. So that is my bottom line here. The romantic story that we used to know everything before and that we are now getting dumper and dumper is comfortable but false. We also searched a lot, read, tried out a lot of stuff and introduced a lot of errors in our code base. Today that loop is faster and easier to use. Software engineering remains decision making under constraints. So my opinion is stay curious, use these new tools, but take responsibility for the choices.